Hi everyone, and uh, welcome to the Image Builder Deep Dive. Uh, I'm Moshe Imaman, and I'm joined here with Tushar. Um, so the Image Builder Deep Dive project is a sponsored project by the SIG Cluster Lifecycle Group. Um, and if we go into the, the history of the project, uh, there was a, a, a really a lack of uh, consensus on on approaches. So there there are uh, quite a lot of approaches to building images, and we are talking about uh, machine images. So these are the images uh, that that provide Kubernetes hosts, not container images. There's, there, it, there's quite a bit of confusion there. Uh, and there was a document that was put out at the beginning of of the project, which was over a year ago. And uh, there was a lot of comment on that document and some people prefer uh, building in the cloud, some people prefer building locally, some people prefer using uh, bits directly and th there really was a, a lack of consensus on this. Uh, and it was kind of agreed upon that the, the best way forward was to at least uh, try and consolidate efforts around building images uh, so that there is at least a centralized effort and, and not effort as, uh, split over many different places and repositories. And then once effort was centralized in one place, we can begin rationalizing uh, how the different approaches work together and how to make sure everybody's needs and, and opinions are, are kind of catered for uh, with a, a single tool uh for the entire kubernetes community so this is a, a tool that was the, that was um or a project that was created for the for the community but it it has a, a lot of focus on the cluster api project uh most likely because uh, that's where a lot of the effort in the sig cluster lifecycle group is currently so when when we look at um at the goals, uh, so we wanted to to provide this consistent tooling and approach for for all different type of of ways of building images, um, and we wanted to make it easy for for downstream consumers. So uh, once the 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 group or a distribution created an image for a company or an individual to go and customize that image, add their their little bits should be. Uh, as easy as possible. And, and one of the things that really isn't catered for currently is, is testing conformance of images. Um, there, there are a lot of issues that, that can come up with uh, incompatible Docker versions, container D versions. Um, so we really do want to have some type of conformance test for an image to say, this image can run Kubernetes successfully. And, um, while not a, a, a primary goal, so releasing images across different operating systems and cloud providers uh, was kind of a stretch goal at the moment. This is uh, handled um, separately by individual subprojects. So each of the, the infrastructure providers for cluster API is releasing their own images. Uh, KOps is releasing their own images. Uh, and, and eventually we want to get to a point where we can have some some uh, centralized mechanism for releasing and promoting images. So looking at, at what we have today, so there are, are three tools that were kind of consolidated into the, the repository. The first one being uh, an Ansible Packer uh, uh, configuration. Um, and this is where uh, where historically a lot of the work by Heptio was done in, on their projects and uh, and where today Microsoft and VMware and many of the other infrastructure providers for cluster API are spending time uh, building conformant images for cluster API. So uh, there are providers for VMware, Microsoft, Google Cloud, DigitalOcean, uh, OpenStack or QMU. Um, and for a variety of operating systems, uh, Windows is in the work, so is Flatcar. The uh, second tool in the repository uh, would be Cube Deploy, and this comes from uh, the KOps project. Um, and at the moment, there is uh, very limited support on, on the tool. Um, and 
more than likely it will be the first one to merge into one of the other tools. Uh, and then the final tool is a, uh, a Golang based CLI that, that is really designed to uh, take a lot of the um, configuration effort out of Ansible and Packer and, and provide a better user experience. And this is uh, a, a where kind of the future of, of the project is, but it's um, uh, not very well adopted at the moment and not very well documented at the moment. Um, so that is what we have today. And I will hand over to, to Shara who will give you uh, a, a more deep dive into the Ansible and Packer configuration. Thanks, Mosh. <clears throat> Let's start with our Packer and Ansible system. For those who don't know, Packer is a free and open source tool for creating golden or base images for multiple platforms from a single configuration. And Packer builds and provisions and also does some post-processing to output the final <clears throat> cluster API conformant images. The next major tool that we use uh, is Ansible. Uh, Ansible helps us to configure Kubernetes images and binaries, uh, relevant Debian or RPM packages on the, on the system, as well as it also helps in hardening the image, like cleaning up the logs and uh, removing the users and privileges. Uh, this will all be demoed later. So uh, basically this screen shows the high level diagram of what uh, the Packer and uh, Ansible make file based system looks like. The pipeline here describes the process of image building. <clears throat> the configs uh, feed into make system, which invokes Packer binary with requisite Packer variables and execution files. And as you can see here, Packer is a three stage process where uh, it first builds an OS image from an ISO or a base AMI or an Azure offer. Once base VM is ready, Packer passes on the execution to provisioning stage. The two major provisioners we run are Ansible and GOSS. Ansible configures the image, um, installs various components, and GOSS is a server spec style tool which tests the image, uh, whether all the packages, services, and, uh, and the versions are, are, are as expected, installed as expected. And the last step of, uh, of this stage is post-processing, where uh, uh, you can do a lot of things uh, like generating a manifest, which tells like what all things went into this image. Uh, you can also like uh, download the OVF and customize the OVF in case of OVA Builder. So yeah, and at the end of the whole process, finally we get uh, an image which is uh, uh, CAPI conformant. So a bit more about Packer configs that feed into the system. So these Packer configs are used to define Kubernetes versions, Kubernetes sources, uh, container version, kickstart and pre-seed files. Uh, some of these arguments are passed down by Packer to the Ansible provisioner for installing <coughs> correct components and stuff. You can also modify these configs to build custom images. Coming on to the Ansible, uh, we have uh, basically uh, structured all the Ansible uh, tasks uh, in four uh, roles. As this slide displays, uh, uh, actually five roles and one custom and like, um, uh, uh, X number of custom roles. So, so you can see like there are four predefined roles which set up the base components, installs container, D, Kubernetes and provider specific stuff like Azure CLI, AWS, SSM agents and VMware cloud init guest sources. And then uh, there are like custom roles so where you can um, run and like install some uh, specific things to your own uh, enterprise or your own image, like whatever, uh, some agents, specific agents that you want on your image. And the last role is also a system defined role called Syspread, where we basically clean up the image building logs and then do some security hardening, like uh, remove SSH users and uh, remove pseudo privileges and stuff. So uh, as described before, custom and civil roles actually enable you to completely undo the past four roles that we saw and redo them in your own way. And then, um, so uh, so it, it's, it's a pretty, pretty powerful feature which will allow you to like uh, customize the image as, 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 uh, as you want. And then we run the sysprep role in the end, uh, which will clean up the things for you. So uh, yeah, so uh, this is about customizing the image and we'll see a demo later how we customize the image. So in the demo, we'll see that we'll add a custom Ansible role. And then I'll build a custom photo on OVA and customize it to increase the increase the, uh, uh, to change some uh, kernel parameters uh, related to GC threshold. And then I'll also uh, uh, install a package called Havaged, which assists in increasing entropy for random devices on headless servers. At the end, we'll see how a Kubernetes node OVA got built and provisioned. And we'll also uh, go through the powered on image to see like the packages got installed. So let's start our demo. So 
So here we can see that uh, first time doing the make help command, which will list all the targets related to photon three, which I'm going to use for my demo. We can see that there are various builders here and we are going to use a local builder, local hypervisor, uh, VMware fusion based hypervisor and a photon three OS. So to start with, let's look at uh, the Packer config. So here we can see that this is a Packer config for Kubernetes.json. And you can see that various vari uh, variables are defined uh, for the type of Kubernetes uh, version we want to install. Like we can see 117.11 here. We, all of these things can be overridden. We can also see HTTP sources, Debian, Debian and RPM repository and sources. Another uh, configuration we can look at is container D. If you look here, like we are also like customizing the container D version we are installing. Uh, you can also customize the pause image uh, here. So all of these settings again feed into Packer system, which it passes to Ansible for installing the right container D. Uh, coming on to the Packer, uh, main Packer JSON or configuration file, we'll see that uh, on the top, we have defined all the variables that are being consumed. And then we'll have uh, various type of builders. It can be local builder, vSphere based builder, uh, ESX based builder. And then uh, we'll see the builder we are going to use is VMware ISO, which helps us produce local OVF. There are various configurations that we do here, uh, boot command and SSH username, CPU memory. Uh, you can look into more detail on our upstream repo. And next looking at the provisioner, we can see that there is an Ansible provisioner here. We can also add some extra arguments for increasing the verbosity and debugging purposes. And then we can see that we pass the playbook file and the, and the Ansible SSH args to be done. Next important provisioner that we use is GOS. It's uh, basically, as I mentioned before, is for server validation and a server spec style to stool. Uh, so we are passing a various uh, configurations to it. <clears throat> and then the last section is our post processor uh, where we have a post processor of type manifest which generates a, just like a JSON kind of manifest which details what all things got installed as you can see from line uh, 378, 390. All this information is captured in the manifest along with the OVF. Next, we are going to look at the custom Ansible role that I have created to customize the image apart from the upstream image building that will take place on it. So I'm installing this tool uh, called Havaged, as you can see here, to increase the entropy. And then I'm setting some extra kernel params. Next, we'll go and look at the GOS package. And you can see that I have added a test also for the package that I'm installing. So at the end of my uh, Packer builder run and then after uncivilization when GOS runs, it will be able to check uh, whether this package is installed or not. Next, as I mentioned before, like we can edit Packer configurations in place or we can create some Packer vari variable files uh, at the top level and then uh, just use them to overwrite uh, overwrite from there instead of editing the file. So I am installing the Kubernetes version 119.1 and then I have modified things. And then in the custom ISOs, you can see that I have added a custom role, which is the Ansible customize. Now it, this uh, custom role names could be uh, basically an array of roles, but I'm just using one role here. We'll clear off the output to make sure there is nothing there before. And then as you can see, I am putting the custom variable files for Packer and I'm using the uh, make uh, target for building the local and photon three. Let's kick off this build. As you can see on the top of the screen that there are few hack ensure and civil ensure Packer got run. We just make sure the right tooling is present on the machine. And then, uh, Right now it's building the VM, it's waiting for it to boot. Um, and it's, uh, uh, it's uh, then it will wait for getting an IP. And once the system is on, it, will, it should uh, start uh, provisioning it. As you can see here, it's installing all the Ansible roles, Kubernetes right now. And then this is sysprep role cleaning up the SSH keys. And here I can see that 
we are running Gauss and you can see that 48 tests passed and zero failed. So basically Gauss was able to verify that all the components that were required are there and running. For instance, you can see that service container D is running and matches expectation true. Once our final image is created, we can go and see the Gauss spec done by Gauss provisioner on our machine. And this is the exact spec, uh, spec uh, or the test spec run by Gauss in order to verify the image. So we can see that all the various packages are being verified here. We can see that various services are being verified here. And we can also see that we are verifying the, the version of uh, 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 container D installed and what all images are installed on our container runtime system. And then in the end, we can also could see some kernel params. <clears throat> Now we'll start to power on the image and we'll try to assess it into image to see like if those things actually got installed and everything is running perfectly or not. Before powering on the image, we'll just inject the cloud init data, which injects a user for us to be able to assess it. Once we start the VM, it takes some time to boot up and get an IP address. So the image SSH might not work, but after some time it works. As we can see here, the images are installed, but the images that we preload in order to make the boot up of the cluster faster. We can see all these uh, image processes are also running, some of which are exited because it's in a state of reconciliation where slowly everything will be powered on and uh, yeah. Next, uh, you can see that we installed this tool called Heritage, which is installed and present on the system. Yeah, so this is our demo. Uh, of the complete thing. Uh, I would also like to mention that demo was for OVA, but we support wide array of providers and OSs like AWS, Azure, VMware, Kimo, GC, DigitalOcean, and OSs like RHEL, Ubuntu, Amazon Linux 2, CentOS, and also like Flatcar is in progress. I'll pass the uh, slide back to Mosh now. Uh, thank you, Tushar, that was very informative. Um, so the image builder is definitely uh, far from complete. Uh, it is being used in production for a number of use cases. Um, and for the uh, future type of plans, we are looking at releasing a CLI uh, that will um, replace much of the make file functionality uh, and make it a little bit more discoverable and user-friendly. Um, as well as, as make some of the configuration uh, auto-generated uh, and, and merged. Um, we are also looking at, at adding more and more testing as we go along. We already have Azure-based PR testing um, and we'll add AWS, QMU, GCP in the, in the coming months. Uh, flat car support is currently in progress and, and that PR should, should merge soon. Uh, same for uh, Windows image support uh, with uh, support on Azure and OVA. Um, we are also looking at, at taking the gauss based specs uh, and, and expanding upon those to make it uh, a generalized conformance test suite for, for Kubernetes images uh, and not, not even just for images created by the image builder, but for any image and, and used as a as a, a, a tool within the, the community to make sure that that all images on, are consistent and, and version compatibility is is tested for and verified against. Um, we also want to do a lot more testing on the on the images themselves to make sure that they uh, do things like rotate images and and they don't automatically upgrade uh, packages if 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 they shouldn't um, and uh, also publish uh, publishing uh, uh, test grids and and up to the test grid uh, for the results of these images for each um, uh, version of Kubernetes that's released. Uh, and then finally, uh, promoting images for uh, public consumption in, a, in, in much the, the same way that the uh, containers are promoted today for, for many of the sub projects. So in terms of the CLI, so the CLI uh, is um, not a, a replacement, it's, it's an, an addition 
to the existing tool set that, that um, encapsulates much of the, the makefile based functionality, uh, as well as adding a few other uh, non packer based approaches for building images. Um, and, and that should be released uh, for consumption also in the next month or two. Uh, and, and likely by the time this video is, or well, this presentation is, is, is running, it should be out as well. In terms of how you can contribute, um, probably the biggest way is use the tool, uh, consume the images and, and, and tell us uh, what, what could be better, um, attend the office hours uh, if you want, and and really report new issues, um, bugs, um, and, and suggestions, anything is welcome. And where you can find us, so we have a, a bi-weekly office hours, we're on the main SIG cluster lifecycle, uh, Slack group, um, there's a, a getbook as well, um, and you can generally reach us on, on Slack or at the office hours. Um, and then next up, uh, the Q&A. Um, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to raise them and uh, thank you again.